Hello there. Welcome to Can't Draw Horses Club. I'm Corey, and joining me today is Cameron. Hello? 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 What are you going to be doing today, Cameron? I am going to spend today uh, as a pair of disembodied hands that are interacting with, an El with a bunch of Eldar models from Warhammer 40,000. That sounds ideal. Indeed. Having no face or sensory organs beyond the fingertips is unusual, but I think I'll get there. Excellent. My uh, goals for today require a tiny bit of explanation. Um, so I was on the Philadelphia Museum of Art website looking at horses as one does and uh i'll show you some i'm just gonna go through some tabs that i previously opened uh this this jaunty fellow Ooh. this also good one uh -huh. love this one a lot of woodcuts a lot of woodcuts of uh horses peeing too that's uh, peculiar this is a good horse i love this horse yeah yeah. These horses are amazing. Agreed. Bronze horse? Heck yeah. Mm. It's just so many options for horses. Uh, so my plan is to use the new Blender 3.0 to make some materials that look like sculpture materials, such as and including clay glazed clay or earthenware and uh bronze and i want to use the the shader nodes that they've got there because i've never i've never done that before so uh it's gonna be a lot of me just trying everything out good that rules yeah so um, i also had an old well old the current eldar guardian kit okay which is old. This is from like 2000, maybe? Maybe wow. 1998 or 1999. And yeah. I don't know, it still kind of holds up. Like, if you look at other Games Workshop miniatures from that era, uh, they're not this nice. Um, and I think I will be assembling them, even though they're getting, it was just announced that they're getting a replacement kit. Oh! God, it's it, the, the neck socket really brings me back <laughs> <laughs> yeah like this is um this is when games workshop was making plastic models like you would make a barbie doll right yeah like or so and then a left leg and a right leg and a left arm and a right arm and then a head yes and that's kind of like an intuitive way to assemble a person and now they're like optimized for printing it's amazing yes. yeah exactly like you will see them and they will have it will be clearly a person, but they have been sliced through along several planes. And it's it's weird, but effective. Mm -hmm. um, but this is one of the reasons that Eldar players in Warhammer can say that our models were ancient when your entire faction was still, like, crawling around on a high school math notebook. Well, th this and the Phoenix Lords, which are from like 93 or 94. So I primed these this morning, and we'll uh, we'll take them out. Oh, you just prime them on the... I prime on the sprue. It's oh. probably wrong, but it allows you to get everywhere. Yeah, and the bits that you have to trim off are pretty small. Yeah. Especially with the plastic kit. I mean, basically what the primer does is it bites into the plastic and provides kind of like a porous absorbent surface for the paint to go. Yeah. Otherwise, it might just slip off or peel off. Yeah, exactly. Especially with models that you are, like, picking up and playing with. Especially ones that have, like, release agent on them. Or yes. For getting the molds out. Yes. Yeah, it's important that you um, uh, wash your models. It sounds weird. But just soak them in a bit of warm water with uh, 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 dish soap. 
Yep. Because otherwise they're covered in a slight film of uh, grease. Okay. Over here, I have made a monkey head. And I'm going to go over to the very uh, intimidating shading panel. And we're all going to see how my file system is organized. <laughs> Which is to say not. I'm just going to... Just gonna scoot that away. I don't need. I don't need that. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yeah. All right. I uh, I was giving a seminar once, and people saw my my PowerPoint name, which was I think just eight letter A's. <laughs> uh, parentheses one dash final. Dot PPT. <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem with like starting a file or saving it late in production, right? Like, because you have to know before you've begin begun what to call the thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. And names have power. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Play. Made. Uh, I nope. can't see now why. I mean, these figures do have a very bad case of like 90s, but they also, wow, there's a lot of mold lines on this. I think maybe I did a bit of like um, millennial uh, upsampling on these models. Uh huh. Oh, with, you, yeah. with where your eyes don't see the polygons? Yeah, exactly. Right? Where you're like, HD remake of Final Fantasy X. What are you talking about? That game was already HD. <laughs> and then you look at it, and you're like, oh my god. Final Fantasy VII's an interesting one, because I look at it now, and I can't... I can't read the backgrounds anymore. Really? They, they're they too hard to interpret? Yeah, it's just noise. It's just, like, I can see... Because the characters stand out pretty okay, because they're just, like, four polygons each, and they're, they're like, cell-shaded, so they're... Or their their colors are really flat, mm -hmm. um, and then the backgrounds are just dense, and there's like hidden alleyways and stuff like that. And I don't want to go back. I don't want to yeah. go back to 1999. Well, I I mean, like pixel artists who are working in that kind of like, or well, I guess that isn't really pixel art, but you you know what I mean. People who are using um archaic art styles in video games their games don't quite look they look like how that felt <laughs> yeah and they use all sorts of post-processing to kind of mimic the mushy bleeding of old crt monitors mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah because like you you see those side by sides right of like this is what this uh bit of art looked like on a crt and this is what it looks like on an led or an lcd screen right that has like um faithful pixel reproduction and this is what a crt does to it to make it look a bit softer right and the artist designed it like that because they knew they could rely on that kind of like pseudo blending which is interesting. Got to pull up my bronze horse for reference. There we go.
I think another reason I don't want to go back to old video games is because I know I threw like 80 hours in a week into some of them, and I don't want to recreate that commitment. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Like, I remember being in high school and thinking, this is the hardest thing I'm ever going to do, right? Yeah. I just spent six hours in school, and now I have to come home and do homework. <laughs> and then somebody will feed me and do my laundry. Oh. Ah. Uh, hmm. Aha. Figured out how to make a new material. There we go. All right. So test material because I might as well just go through a bunch of the nodes to see what they do. Ooh. Gotta smooth that butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do that off camera. Yeah. TOS. Polish it up. Ooh. Ooh. Noise texture. I'm actually reading the uh the documentation <laughs> the blender docs. <laughs> Ah, uh, the path of the coward, I see. <laughs> no, no, please, please, read documentation. I love documentation. <laughs> Isn't it lovely, actually? Well, when it's done well. I love the joke about watching Alien again, and the only part that doesn't ring true is the fact that the self-destruct... Um, documentation is printed on like you know a nice readable thing yeah on the inside of the uh the panel instead of being in like a um you know one of those uh page sleeves from a binder and like uh just done with clip art Ooh. One of the things I've noticed about doing um or painting figures is that you will spend hours after hour cleaning mold lines yep off the figure and then you will take a picture of the completed one and they're all still there <laughs> all the mold lines are still there somehow you trimmed and you sanded sometimes you filled and yet There they all are, visible from orbit as soon as you snap a photo.
Aha! Mm -hmm. Now I've got some uh, variation in the color so it's not just flat. Ooh. Using oh. a noise uh, generator. Or can I just feed this into displacement? What does that look like? Oh! <laughs> it's gross. Ooh. It's, yeah. It looks a bit ru like it's um explosively rusty. Yeah. That's cool. And oh, ew! That's oh, that's weird. real gross. That's spaghetti. Yeah, that's very organic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is fun. Mm. I wonder if I will become one of those guys that takes his god hand to Japan in order to have it reforged. You can have them sharpened again, right? Huh. Yeah. I believe it. You have to send them back. And I guess they send you Endural, Flame of the West. Right? I was just thinking, it was like, wow, you gotta send it back to Mount Doom to be reforged. <laughs> Uh, the slightest nerd rage at people who are like, oh, yes, Aragorn has received Narsil. He's like, no, no, no. Narsil was the plate that was broken. This when is a different sword world. that looks exactly the same when, it, and is made of the same pieces. When it is reforged, it becomes Andiril, Flame of the West. <laughs> Fake Tolkien fans all up in. All right. Ha. No material. Delete all the old crap. Move on to a new node. What's magic texture? Ooh. What is magic texture? Looks like it makes swirlies. Yeah. Said in the exact same tone that I used when I was learning to drive and asking what cruise control is. All right, the description says the magic texture node is used to add a psychedelic color texture. Ooh. Right? Ooh. Wah! 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 Annihilation! <laughs> right? 
this area X to this monkey. Depth. Number of iterations. Wow, I better keep that number slow. Or low. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Just do what I do when I'm working. Just put in like 10 to the 13th and go away for a week. <laughs> I need this computer for things. All my stuff is over here. Beep. Yes, gradient. Oh, so smooth. Mm. Like smooth, Bernie. Smooth Bernie? I you know, like... know what it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's one of the camera filters for <laughs> Yeah, like for... making yourself look good for the insta. Yeah. But if you crank like... it all the way over and then apply it to Bernie Sanders, you get smooth Bernie. I don't want it. <laughs> Nobody wants it, yet it exists. I don't know what to tell you. No. <laughs> Smooth Ferengi is the worst. I am going to Google that, and it is your fault. Smooth Ferengi. Actually, in, uh, okay, in Star Trek Discovery, the president of the Federation currently, is a uh, half Cardassian. Oh, really? So, yeah, she's a little smooth. She's a little bit of a smooth Cardassian. Distressing. Actually. Oh, no! This Ferengi's not not healthy. <laughs> is it just like my, a Ferengi that has been put in the microwave for 30 seconds? I'd say it got the full, like, five minutes... It's like a like a hot dog that's it's gone through the stages. Oh God. Ooh, yeah, smooth quark. Smooth quark, not good. <laughs> no. How is season four of Discovery? I haven't watched it yet. Uh. <laughs> It knows TV shows that use subtext, and they're yeah. all cowards. It is Star Trek, then. It's a very... Uh, it's when, the, when the two trans characters come in to defend the rights of the uh, onboard AI... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> It's just it's and they keep doing these things where I'm just like, okay, this must be fake. There's no way there's no way they would be doing this. <laughs> this has to be like a, a simulation for for training purposes. And they No, they're not lying. They're they're just doing it. They're huh. just doing it. And like looking at like the substance of the episodes. It is very Star Trek, because it's like, ah, here's the episode with the recruits doing off-world stuff, and we got like an A and a B plot about using uh, banned weapons or something like that. And then on top of that, it's just, just very upfront in your face. <laughs> oh. Does it work? It kind of works within the universe they've established okay just because it's it's been kind of a roller coaster ride the whole time yeah 
like Discovery has been a show that I've been kind of hot and cold on. It's done a lot of things that I like and a lot of things that I'm like indifferent to. Mm. Um, they recently did one little thing that made me so angry. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. They're trying to uh, use the sensor suite to resonate with like a subatomic particle, like mm -hmm. do resonance, and someone calls out uh, what the frequency is. And the other guy, I can't remember the crewman's name, uh, he's like, oh, that's the same frequency as sonar. Let's use sonar. Okay. And so they send out like an active ping and they have the result come in over speakers. So they're doing like a whole submarine thing. Yeah. But they're not using sonar. They're not using sound. Right. But they, they're calling it sonar. That's weird. And I like I just hope it's so that people watching can understand like the shorthand of what they're doing, but I already understood <laughs> before mm -hmm. before the little handhold. <laughs> yeah, it's not even that they're in the vacuum of space. They're in a material and signal void. Like they have no anything. Like it's not even not even that they can't send out a transverse wave, it's just that it disappears after a while. Like... Peculiar. It was hateful. It was an attack on me and my person for caring what acronyms stand for. I mean, I suppose this is the result of people being like, I hate techno babble. Let's just use, say whatever it is you, you want it to be and do it. Their ship runs on mushrooms, like... Yeah, just, just hand wave, actually. The hand yeah. waving in, in Trek has not... It seemed weird at the time, but it actually works. They're using programmable matter. Like, they do anything they want. <laughs> Literally anything. <laughs> They're just yeah. like, we can throw this all away because the ship can just rebuild itself using its own brain. <laughs> ah. Are they fully exploiting uh, matter replicators yet? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, I got distracted by Star Trek. Um, gradient. Oh, what if I displacement instead of surface? And then throw like a another oh is it also so composed of the most stupefyingly attractive people in the universe no no okay interesting it's like a full full range there's a lot of women mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of scenes where it's just like three extremely high-ranking people and they're all women and it's great Oh, do they still have um, uh, the Starfleet Admiral with the best voice in the universe? I forget the name of the actor. I think he's Lebanese. But he was in The Mummy, and he's also the voice of Osiris in Destiny. Yes, he's still around. Cool. Oh, did fair, yeah.
I gotta look up what the material output node does. So I'm like trying to plug stuff into it and I don't know what the inputs are. Ha! Huh. If I want to use something as displacement, there's a displacement node that I hmm. can use as a middleman. What is a displacement? Displacement? Yes, in this context. It is more to do with like a bump mapping surface type thing. Okay. So it makes it look like the surface is textured. It's kind of what I was doing earlier with the, the really rusty looking thing. Oh, okay, okay. Where I used noise as an input, but now I've got a gradient texture, which just kind of based on space does like a full black to white gradient. So I was thinking it would make part of the model deform. Oh, interesting. But uh, it didn't. Actually, looking at these models now, I really appreciate how they've thought about the sculptor thought about where the seam lines would be in the mold and tried to put objects along them. Right. Like you can see this armor panel on the thigh. The leading edge of it is actually along the, the, the forge line. Yeah. So it kind of disguises it a little bit. That's thoughtful. I like that. I think this this kit was probably a uh, Jess Goodwin um, joint. Who's Jess Goodwin? Jess Goodwin is kind of like the um, is Games Workshop's lead sculptor and um, uh, uh, concept artist. He did a lot of he does the Space Marines basically. The Space Marines are I think one hundred percent Jess Goodwin, um, and have been since like the mid nineties. Or early 90s he might be a founding member of the company really and the eldar as well were his if um john blanche is responsible for a lot of like the feel of warhammer 40k john blanche did a lot of like watercolor work right um and is responsible for a lot of like the medieval kind of feeling of for or the pop medieval feeling of 40k Jess Goodwin is responsible for a lot of like the actual um, tabletop like translation. Like this figure is a Jess Goodwin one. Okay. He's very good at, like, um, I would say his, his sketches are uh, very, very well adapted to his role as a sculptor because they are clear, like the surfaces tend to be clear. There isn't a lot of, like, weird detail, and his silhouettes are strong. That's always good. Right. You, you can tell that he is sculpting or sketching with um, the tabletop in mind, where you have to be ab able to identify a figure at like a couple of meters distance. Arm A. Arm A. I remember the last time I built this kit, which is probably like 20 years ago. You put there... Whoops, sorry. 
you put their left arm on, but not their right arm, because their right arm carries the gun, carries their shuriken catapult. Okay. Um, and that covers their chest. Ah, which then you can't paint. Yes. I'm really hoping that Games Workshop at some day reprints Jess Goodwin's um, art book, which was called The Eldritch and the Gothic. I used my local gaming store in Prince George had a copy of it that I used to thumb through, and I never bought it. Oh, possibly because I was going to use that money on miniatures. And then a few years ago, they actually printed a hardcover um, book of his sketches called the Eldar Sketchbook. And every store got five of them, maybe. And the last time I looked on eBay, they simply did not exist. Weird. Yeah, I guess the people who got them are hanging on to them. Oh, Draxov, yes. Putting tiny magnets in uh, in these models is a time-honored tradition. So you, you can pose the arm or something? Yeah, pose the arm, or more commonly, to swap out weapons. Ah! Let's comment on, um, on uh, human figures, but on vehicles, it's very, very common to have your uh, model magnetized. So that you can, you know, change the weapons when you want. Although it does mean, um, I've seen people who just do it with single magnets, and they can pivot. Right. So after after a game, all of your models' guns are kind of like pointing down. I don't magnetize my models because I'm not a coward. <laughs> and I'm lazy. There we go. Oh, yes, Sundral. Uh, pinning models is still a thing, right? You would, on especially for metal models, where the weight of the figure makes it easy to break, Right. Um, you would drill uh, a tiny hole, or a deep but small hole using a pin drill, and then use a bit of paper clip to as act as a pin between two surfaces. Okay. So you drill a hole in each surface insert a paper clip and then that would provide like a little bit of a skeleton so that the bit was harder to break off ah and would you glue that yes yeah then you would super glue it because the only thing that works on pewter or the old metal models was super glue which holds well but is brittle right so if you drop an old metal model it just shatters into like its constituent atoms ah
I was extremely sad recently to find out that the company that uh, was contracted to make Warhammer tights has gone out of business. Because if there was ever a company or a property that needed tights, it's Warhammer 40k. Specifically for the Eldar. The Harlequins literally wear tights. Whoa. If anyone is curious, this is an Eldar Guardian. Eldar are like the space elves of Warhammer 40k. You want to hold that in the middle? Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, you know, they're going extinct. They live on giant uh, spaceships called craft worlds. And Guardians are their citizen militia. Right? They live very long lives, so basically everyone will have walked the path of the warrior at some point in their life. And, you know, when they go to walk a different path and become like an artisan or, you know, a poet or whatever they do. Right. Uh, they can be called back into surface, service in times of great need. And they are called guardians when they do that. So do they have more like individual style? Uh, no. No, they're basically given a gun and sent into combat. I see. Uh, I am now playing with a wave texture, which has options for bands or rings. So it's like vertical, horizontal. I can make them squiggly. But it's like, this is a very easy wood texture. <laughs> Ooh. If I mix some color in. Oh, that's not doing what I expected. That is... That's very woody. Hmm, woody, woody. Hmm, hmm. The most upsetting thing about that sketch is I know exactly what they're talking about and agree. Tinny word. Tinny. No, tinny. Oh, woody. Yes, woody. Right, they're essentially having the moist conversation. Hmm. <laughs> Moist. The only moist conversation I've ever had was people talking about how they never want to hear that word again. Mm. Mm hmm. Looking at uh, MT MTV CDM has posted a. Stuff using Pua shells. Ooh. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, I guess you can... Get cool Mother of Pearl stuff. Cool. So yeah, what I did not expect was it to take the darker part of the wave and color it using the color that I inserted. I thought it would do the white part and not the black part. Weird. So maybe in invert? Is there an inversion? Oh, I forgot. The Eldar Guardians also just have, like, I mean, not a Category 5 dumper. They're not like Pixar, Pixar moms. But, you know, they got a round little apple back there. Round little apple. I'm playing Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, Peter Quill's got uh, got buns. 
<laughs> I've got him in the, the Nova outfit, and uh -huh. it's just like two very smooth orbs. <laughs> I, um... It's no was, Miranda, but, you know. I was horrified to discover in Destiny that your guardian has no ass. Yeah, it's just flat. Yeah, it's just flat. What's the point? What's 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 even the point? You're an immortal warrior mystic. It's like, well, they can resurrect you, but they can't they can't resurrect your ass. Yeah, every time, every time they bring you back, it gets a little flatter. Yeah, you just lose a, just that little bit of yourself. tragic yep i mean i guess the in-game reason is that you always have like warlocks usually have a very long robe hunters have a cape and hunt uh titans have their tabard right their mark and i suppose having just a badonk would like create odd collisions Or perhaps clip through them. But they already have so much, like, clipping stuff. Where, like, your your cape or whatever does flow into your legs. So it's like, they're not saving us from anything. <laughs> they, they chose. This was a choice that they made. And it's like, all 3D modelers who work on humanoids do spend time sculpting an ass. Mm -hmm. like it's, it's deliberate if there's no ass. It's like... They have to go against their training. <laughs> <laughs> Sensei, forgive me, but I must go all out just this once. Apple bottom jeans and the boots with the... <laughs> Yeah, Bungie is weak. <laughs> Took me a moment, Ard. The drifter ate all of the blank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one can have an ass because drifter ate it all. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. I mean, a speedrun trick that involves your ass clipping out of bounds, or a speedrun trick that involves your ass clapping out of bounds. Just, just imagining like a uh, not a Zed fighting, but a, a physics engine <laughs> trying to disentangle your ass from a wall once it's gotten lodged in there. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose we are just talking about Metal Gear Solid here. It always comes back to Metal Gear, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, there's a reason he's called Solid Snake. I did think it was odd in the first game that you had to spend a significant amount of time examining people's asses. To find Meryl, I think. Mm-hmm.
Oh. There's a viewer node that I can use to look at stuff. Ooh. Or there should be. Assuming I can spell view. Maybe they got rid of it. V Y O U. View. It says they exist in the documentation. Doesn't say what heading they might be under. Output nodes. No, they're just gone. Oh. Huh. Maybe they'll be back later. Discouraging. Yeah. All right. I'm starting to get uh, baked to death by the, the day ball, so I think it's time to take a break. So Let's I can do that. close the window. Okay. Sounds good. All right. See, See you, you in again. five, everyone. Yeah, soon. Hello, everybody. We are back. Joining me today is Cameron, who is oh. working on uh, some dolls. I am. Okay. I do not have a dollhouse for them, as my mother used to call it, but here we are, nevertheless. My Eldar Guardians, using the old Eldar Guardian kit, which is soon to be replaced. Blah. Yeah. Ready for oh. action. Oh. oh, that's it. You go on eBay and you can search for this now as out of print. Hmm. Thought you weren't going to attach the right arm. Oh, I have not. Ah, it's just... Ah! <laughs> Sorry, sir. Thank you for <laughs> your service. Oh. All right. Meanwhile, uh, I'm making a monkey different colors. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Blender 3.0 because I am spending my day reading documentation. Mm. Behold, Musgrave texture. <laughs> Even more detailed pearl and noise output than the noise texture. Ooh. We, we all have favorite types of noise, right? Mm hmm. What's yours, Cameron? Uh, I'll go with Bayesian. Oh. Hmm. Yes. Actually, I don't know if that's a noise type, but... It's a good guess, as far yeah. as, as maths and visualization goes. I, I actually do not. I, I lied. I got caught in a lie. <laughs> Well, we're taking away your fong shaders. 
<laughs> no. How will I fong? <laughs> no one uses fong shaders anymore. Oh, good. We'll call them. Mm. TFW, they don't even know about frustum culling. <laughs> You would not believe the number of people who do not understand why we can't just draw everything all the time. <laughs> it's just like, sorry, how many triangles are in that plank of wood, artist? A million? <laughs> well, you know that thing has to move on screen, right? Oh, and the texture's double-faced. Incredible. Even though the camera will never be inside the piece of wood. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a rectangular prism, right? It has it has six surfaces, so it should have 12, 12 triangles, right? Yes. If we're being kind to our machines. <laughs> we are never kind to our machines. All right, so again, I'm going to pop this into the displacement because it's fun. Fun for everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, cheese monkey. <laughs> Mmm, delicious. Oh. That's a craggy, craggy monkey head. Let's make that gray. Er. I should move my camera slightly. It's probably much easier for me to stay in shot. All right. I should have cleaned out my keyboard last night. Pulled all the keys, given them a little rinse. Started off 2022 with a fresh keyboard. Oh god, Art. Uh, I've, I've seen 4K textures on very simple objects before. Just like having, having a loaf of bread in your... <laughs> In your level, that just slows the whole thing down. I can understand how the grapes thing happened in right, Final right, Fantasy. Because, right. you know, if you've got, like, a, a vineyard, you might mm -hmm. need hundreds of these grape bunches. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if it's not, like, well documented that another area has grapes, then you you end up making your own. Little fruit filled uh, gem. Whatever, nobody's going to look at it. It's not like anyone's going to care about the number of of um, uh, surfaces on a bunch of grapes. That would be weird, right? Yeah. The yassification of grapes in Final Fantasy. Oh, oh, this is unhealthy looking. Oh, it's corroded. Okay, I've just seen a, a new word. Today's word is lucanarity. Lucanarity. 
difference between the scale of each two consecutive octaves. Huh. That's fun. Okay. I wonder if I can get, like, different colors based on the, the offset. That should be a thing I can do. Mm -hmm. Mask? No, that's not a word. Clamp? That's not what I want. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just looking for something. Oh, that's exactly what I'm doing, too. Uh, mm -hmm. Partly looking inside my own brain, and then partly reading the documentation and looking at menus. Mm -hmm. So what I want is to separate the information. And I don't know how to split stuff, but... Maybe this map range thing. Okay. Like what happens if I put that into the color instead of the displacement? So I had that thing earlier where uh, the dark color from the wave texture got colored okay right so maybe if i just combine the colors no not mix color mix shader These are different nodes. There we go. Okay. So if I dupe this and uh, throw it through an inverter, Okay.
That's weird. So it's not doing what I want. Oh. Pretty gross, though. Yeah, no, I don't like that. Maybe I should go next year for Halloween as Problems Clown. What is Problems Clown? Do you remember? It was a couple of years ago. It was like a very short video of um, the silhouette of a man looking dejected, while the silhouette of a clown labeled Problems throws axes into his back. And then a silhouette of a woman labeled wife appears, um, throws up a bubble that deflects the axes, and then annihilates the clown in a pulse of light. Well, some sappy, radio-friendly American music played. It was... Problems Clown is, I don't know, it struck a nerve. This. As people were like, what? <laughs> what? Hearing your description, uh, it sounds like Candle Cove. Like, <laughs> are you sure this is the real Cameron? Or you, you weren't just staring at some white noise on the computer screen? Man, if I could stare at white noise on a computer screen, that would be great. Oh, Isn't there's videos on YouTube. Wouldn't the compression ruin it? Like, isn't it... It's it's a little weird to think that, like, the thing that was basically free to send on TVs for when there was no signal is actually very kind of, like, intensive to stream on yeah. a computer screen. Yeah. Because it's random, right? So you actually have to specify every pixel. Kinda. I mean, you could send an algorithm for it, I guess. But, like, streaming static is, it never looks right. Right.
Maybe I need like texture coordinates to change what part of the model color stuff is being applied to if this isn't working. So it is it is combining the colors. It's just not in different areas. Thank you, Farabender, for finding Problem Clown. Oh, yeah. No, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. Anyway, I think I could make a good go of trying to go as Problems Clown for next Halloween. Well, now I'll at least know what you're doing, if I see it. <laughs> Eating like... axes into people's back. <laughs> and then people will ask me if I'm it. Or if I'm Pennywise. They'll say it. <laughs> yeah, 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 they will.
Doop. Try to make sure I grab the right, the correct mix type. Yes, this is different. Okay. Is this a color? No. Uh. Maybe RGB as an input? Gotta make sure I'm outputting a color and not a shader. And welcome Raiders from Good Day Internet. I hope you're all having a good day. I'm shading a monkey and Cameron is assembling, assembling a making making elves making some expired elves uh they are oop therefore extremely valuable and i'm destroying them good work oop pro painted Oh, right, I can multiply two things with the mix shader. Mix RGB. Mix shader. Look, snake eater covers are not illegal. The cover, it's too good. You're still in a dream. Mix shader. Mix shader. My favorite part of Snake Eater is when the lady says Snake Eater. <laughs> snake Eater. Ooh. Blend modes. Ugh. That's odd. Plasma storm monkey. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, the reboot GameCube. Or the reboot game space. Look, you kids. It was a millennial <laughs> thing. Okay, I was watching Owl House last night with a friend. Uh-huh. And there was a sec section where um, one character was trying to call on a power by, like, screaming yep. and yelling a bunch. Yep. And... Another character asks her, like, what are you doing? And he's like, she's like, oh, it's something I saw in a, you know, in a human thing once. And brings up a copy of, uh, a VHS copy of Dragon Claw Z. Yes. And the first character, or the second character says, wow, this is ancient. Yep. And she says, come on, it's only, what, 30 years old? I saw this in theaters. And I was just like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> Owl House did not need to come for us this way. 
Yeah, no, I was like, this is not okay. What the shit? <laughs> what did I do to you, Owl House? <laughs> Other than, I guess, pirate you. Well, it's cancelled, so whatever. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Disney. Yeah. Oh, you can't have nice things. That's Disney. Mm -hmm. That's what Disney sounds like. Maybe, but maybe Falcon and the Winter Soldier might hold hands. Uh, uh. Look, I was holding out for really good hoodie merch. They just, mm -hmm. they, it just never delivered. I, I was not. Um. <laughs> What, you don't like you don't like the bird worm. <laughs> oh, I'm hooty. Upsetting. It's my favorite. I mean, he's supposed to be right. I guess hooty is supposed to be profoundly upsetting. Yes. But yeah, nailed it. Like, I don't like this. Yeah, that's the one. Like, you know, BJ and Heather will watch more cartoons uh, than than I. And then tell me which character I am. Uh -huh. uh, so yes, yeah, everyone knew that I would be all over Hootie. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for Centaur World, it's it's Glendale, which is great because that's the 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 author insert character. Yeah, well, isn't Hootie voiced by um what's his name from uh, who did Gravity Falls? Uh, Alex Hirsch. Yeah, isn't isn't Hootie voiced by Alex Hirsch, or am I thinking of some other? Or Swampy. I'm trying to remember their names. But yeah, Hootie's Hootie's got a real a real voice actor, whereas uh, Glendale has the, the show creator. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> In my tummy. I like Centaur World. It's just chaotic and stupid and Sometimes, just sometimes. God. If only I could show you people Glendale's magical <laughs> adventure. <laughs> like, Can't Draw Horses Club is now just a Centaur World stream, alright? Unfortunately, we do not. We live in a world where the highest possible crime is sharing something with your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was I doing? I was putzing with the inputs on blend modes. And that was when I realized, watching Owl House, that I am probably older than the main character's mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, things are getting there. You know, after after the 2000s started, I think it was just, it was just all downhill after that. It's like, yeah. it, the second babies were being born mm -hmm. in this century... I was just, I was lost to the ages, just, I, I may as well just be a skeleton. Yeah, exactly. Well, Put me in the British Museum. Good game, elder millennials, good game. <laughs> Hit the showers, we're done here. <laughs> and take your toast with your avocados. Like, at this point, I'm only being catered to because the people making the shows are my age. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's like, ugh, finally, the anime references I've been craving. Yeah, I was just happy that it was a Dragon Ball reference and not an Evangelion one. Because I think that would have actually just, like, I would have had to have walked out into the winter, <laughs> you know, and announced that I might, 
I might be gone for some time. Yeah. Just, and all that was left was the sound of the wind and the dust rolling across the prairie. <laughs> Then I would meet my ancestors who were like, so we heard about these things called chicken nuggets. How are they? We also understand that you can just buy salt. You must be so rich. Right. From the Himalayas. It, it, it has also been kind of troubling living in a world where... Um, Certain things that were obscure have been like touted as things for the rich and famous, and then you try them and they suck. Like yep. caviar. Yeah, I mean, like caviar was the cachet. Like, it's not even a very fancy Russian thing, is it? Like, Russians just kind of have caviar casually, don't they? Well, not casually, but it's not as exclusive as it is in the in uh in Anglo countries. Like, just imagine being introduced to potatoes and then eating raw potatoes. Ooh, yeah, right. Like, I think that's the kind of stuff I'm dealing with. It's just like, oh, when we were young, we could not have canned tuna. <laughs> tuna casserole. The hot new craze. <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure that's why the 70s cookbooks are all, like, gelatin and pineapple. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Like, pineapple would, canned pineapple was probably quite fancy. Yeah. I like how on um, budget recipe websites, you can tell when somebody is from California. Because they're like, three avocados, 25 cents each. Oh my god. Like, we even grow avocados here, right? And they're not. They're not going to be on any budget recipe. Nope. I mean, I still pay for them, but... But that's a, you know, that's a luxury. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's my indulgence. Okay. Well, I acknowledge that these models are still nice, and they still, like, I, st I still think they look good. Right. There is so much cleaning necessary on all of them, because the, mod the molds are just old. So they've all got brutal seam lines. Oh. Uh, I kind of feel that way about stuff that comes out of our 3D printer, because mm -hmm. the... Um... What is it? Placement lines? The um, extrusion lines. Mm. Mm -hmm. Just from, from doing the coiling, basically. Got some, like, Jomon era figurines coming out. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys play X-Wing, right? Yep. They must have, like, all the obscure Star Wars fighters in... Um like homebrew rules for that game, right? Yep. That you can 3D print out? Yep. Hey, Ian, want to pass me your ship? Ah, uh, here we go. This is what, like a hammerhead? The hammerhead Corvette. Yeah. Dope. Ian's been working on this. Cool. Out of curiosity, has anyone figured out why the Rebel Alliance was flying their freighters into combat at Endor? I think it was just lack of resources. Probably. Like, I think it was, you know, literally that they just had the model, right? And they needed a bunch of ships for the battle. What? For production reasons? Yeah. What? I thought you wanted a real reason. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, like, Battle of Endor was, like, everything, right? Everyone. Everyone. Get in here, everyone. Yeah. It's a pool party!
Actually, there, uh, Laserbeak's Fury, there is a shoe in a Star Wars um, original trilogy special effects shot, but it is in the asteroid field sequence in uh, Return, uh, Empire, Empire Strikes Back. There is a shoe in that. Because apparently uh, George Lucas was being completely intolerable that day and everything had to be perfect. So on the effects, people was just like, fine, my shoe's in the shot now. And he didn't notice. Perfect. Kind of a great example of if you're going to micromanage, please at least know the job. Ha. I'm just embarrassed it took me like until last year to figure out that the B Wing was a Mon Calamari starfighter. Oh, yes. It's and the only way it makes sense. Got ghost energy on my monkey. Ooh. It's like, whoa. Doesn't come across very well, I think. Very spoopy. Kind of getting somewhere like I wanted it to. Right. So, I'm, like, I'm trying to use multiply because I wanted to treat the black and white input as a masking kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not working like I expect it to. Or maybe I need to change the factor? Je ne sais pas. Oh, yeah, it was the factor. Okay. What there... is the Um... Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Sorry, did you ask what the factor is? Yeah, what what is the factor? It's the amount of mixing. Oh, okay. I think it's like the dry and wet and not the like blending. Okay. Trying to I'll just read the documentation. <laughs> amount of influence the node exerts on the output. So it would either send the unadulterated or completely adulterated result. Okay. And yeah.
I did it. Two different colors. Nice. Two down. All right. I think I've kind of got a handle on at least the Musgrave texture. What's next? Ooh, got value mapping, where you just make a number a different number. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can generate normals and dot products. Ooh, dot products. I remember how to... Do you? Do I? Do you? Do I? Dot products are really, really useful uh, they are. for video games. Yeah, well, I mean, like, they they let you produce a new vector. Well, you can use them to determine, like, if the camera is facing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside, outside. God, do I remember how to do a dot product? I would need to look it up, actually in order to feel confident doing one. Mm. I can still do a lot of linear algebra. I mean, I still do a lot of linear algebra. You probably have, like, sets and matrix math and stuff like that. Yeah, well, I mean, it helps that I'm only ever doing, like, 3 by 3 matrices. That's all you need. Yeah. It's like memorizing pi to anything longer, more than six digits. Right? Yeah. If you have more than six figs in your measurement, well, good for you, I guess. Actually, I only do five digits. Yeah. One, four, one, five, nine. Right, like, one of our profs was, you know, explained to us that, you know, you can memorize pi as long as you, or as many as you to as many digits as you like, but you're going to lop it all off when you're doing your sig figs. Yeah. Right? Like, you're measuring, I don't know, a volume to three or four sig... probably sig four significant figures, right? You're you're expected to be good, so let's say four sig figs. Um, so you don't really need to know pi to any more than that. Like in a laboratory setting. There's a lot of nodes that involve post-processing and stuff that I don't want to do. I just want to do the materials. I'm so 
sorry, everyone. I keep dragging my work closer and closer to my body as my back fails. <laughs> Just curling in like a shrimp? Yep. I've got painter's hunch. Mm. Warham hunch, actually. My spine is made of Warham? Yep. I'm a being of pure Warham. Yeah, everyone sit up straight, if you can. <gasps> You'll feel better. T-posing for maximum posture. Oh, I'm not looking forward to that in the nursing home. <laughs> the nurse being like, all right, everyone, T-pose for health. Oh. And now into oh, A-pose and back to T-pose. And then I'll be like, my digital avatar has weird seams in the shoulder. <laughs> I read way too many fictions with uh, immersive sims. Mm -hmm. Just way too many. I'm going to be so disappointed when that never happens. That's my rocket ship. When do I get my cybernetic body? Oh, we found it was actually way cheaper just to let you die. <laughs> Meanwhile, James will be out punching a chunk on an asteroid somewhere. <laughs> like hey. we, we reviewed your your footage from your your body of work throughout your lifetime, and we feel like you're well suited for. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah, it's like. Hey kids, or hey elder millennials, do you remember Minecraft? You might have what it takes to be a remote asteroid miner, which will allow you to finance your body. If you can hit these quota numbers, how's your APM? <laughs> You've heard of Cookie Clicker, but what about Chunk Puncher? <laughs> I mean, we're joking, but we're also not. Yeah. Because, you know, there's certain things that are impossible with, you know, how signal quality degrades over time and the, the actual act of uh, transferring a consciousness to a machine. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not a thing. <laughs> I still like the one crap shot we wrote years ago. But, well, I wrote years ago. We made years ago. Uh huh. About like Beach waking up in a digital environment, and I'm there to conduct an interview t with him about what kind of body he wants. Right. But you know his brain scan was recovered. Um, well, we had his brain scan. It was sitting around on like. You know the the brain scan equivalent of a zip drive, and we had to recover a um a, a drive that would read it before we could like upload him. Yep, because it was proprietary and it was decaying. But hey, we recovered one from uh, the um the Pacific Gyre. We paid uh, some Gleesian junk divers to recover it in blank telomeres. We talk about the garbage patch a lot. Yeah, yeah, we do. I think I think I use a, um, the amount of like telomeres was a um, uh, uh, an information volume 
I think it was like several terabytes of blank telomeres. I had fun writing it, is what I'm saying. I thought it had some fun sci-fi in it. Uh-huh. I also saw somebody um, posted a link to, or a Tumblr screenshot of somebody going through um, two panel control alt delete. Yeah. Where they've gone through and deleted the middle two panels of a bunch of control alt delete. So it's just beginning and end? Yeah. And they're actually funny. Oh, no. You know, which was something that I had to reckon with. Um, and Graham saw it and he was like, oh, God, please nobody do this with any of our sketches. Well, chat, yeah. <laughs> we got a, a thing for you to try. I mean, hopefully it doesn't work. Hopefully our sketches are actually like all the words are important. <laughs> uh, hmm. No, Beowulf, you absolutely cannot cut anything out of Oglaf. Each of those frames is perfect. Yeah, Oglaf is actually, like, really tightly scripted. It's impressive. Oglaf, I think, has some of the best, um... Um, uh, uh... Not safe for work content on the internet? Yeah, honestly. The writing on it is so good. Profoundly not safe for work, but also just really, really good. Hmm. You know, it's a good day when you have to look up Fresnel. Ooh. I believe it's pronounced Fresnel. Uh. <laughs> Kazoon type. another one because Cerner Blatz what if I actually just drag the camera to where I'm working what if what if what if we streamed things that are on camera why though hmm Oh, cool. Gonna need to make more monkeys.
My hotkeys are different now. There we go. Hello. Yeah. Wonder. I should really write down what pose each of these arms is doing, or each pair of these arms is doing. Mm -hmm. Because each one has kind of, they're difficult to read on the sprue, um, but each one has like, you know, one of them is slinging the gun kind of low, and another one is like holding it up to shoot, and another one has like it lifted all the way up right. as it's running. I can never remember which one is which. Hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. Behold! With the power of a single shader, I have made three different colored monkeys. Be amazed! Behold! Is Corey making NFTs? Never! But I will make you watch a commercial. Ooh. Because it's break time. It is. See you soon, chat. Welcome back, everybody. We are here doing a bunch of stuff all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Cameron is assembling some... Mans? Eldar Guardians. And I am shading a monkey. Behold! I made them wibbly. <laughs> Profound. <laughs> Whoa! As per usual, getting a lot done, but not really. <laughs> We're learning. Yeah, that's the thing I'm doing. I'm dusting off old memory banks. Mm. Yeah, well, we were already talking about uh, linear algebra and dot products and Dragon Ball Z. Mm hmm. Have you ever run into a Z-up versus Y-up issue? Uh, yes. Yeah, actually. Frequently. Um, because a lot of the code that I work with is written by... Well, it's written by scientists rather than, like, you know, professional coders. Right. And so a lot of it is for use in, like, one-off projects. Right? I wrote this for 
you know, this one problem that I specifically had, but I thought I would put it up here in case anyone else could find it useful. Right. And you run into all kinds of different weird conventions, right? Whatever anyone felt was convenient at the time. So, or whatever anyone um, personally used. Hmm. So, a lot of Y up versus Z up. Yeah, I've run into it just because you never know what the program someone else is using outputs their models as. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember, I think it was Lily shared a photo once of like um, two utensils that were produced or used in the same project, like, you know, a fork and a knife. Yep. And one of them had the zero at the base of the utensil. Yep. And the other one had the origin in the middle of the utensil. Yep. And it was just like, I don't know how hard that is to fix, but I definitely was like, ah, I understand the problem. That seems like, a, that seems frustrating. Yeah. And then you try to attach it to your anything and you're like, I'm holding the knife by be below the base or I'm grabbed the fork by the head. Yep. Like, neither is wrong, but they should Neither is helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I learned that AOV stands for Arbitrary Output Variables. Hmm. Not sure what that means. But we can file that away for future use. Mm -hmm. It clearly means something. Mm, nodes reference. Throwing uh, color through a shader, making it actually uh, follow the geometry information versus just making a shape that's the color I want. Ooh.
Want to see some glossy monkeys? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, wow, they're metallic. Got some glossy monkeys. Magnificent. Ooh. <laughs> Acid washed glossy monkey. Yeah, just making that monkey aged in real time. That was me when they made that Dragon Ball joke. Make things extremely shiny. All right, that's it, chat. I'm putting the monkeys away. They're getting replaced with cubes. Oh, no. No more monkeys. Cube! Just trying to get the arm poses right so that they feel like they're in balance with the like the legs of the model. Right. And that the head is also pointing in the correct direction. Right. Like, I don't know. I feel like the model's head should be pointed in the same direction that their gun is pointing. Right. Which is kind of a safety issue. It's like, oh, what about over here? Huh? Oh, it's cool. Ooh. Yeah. Made a wrinkly cube. <laughs> Is still cube?
in which variable is permitted before it stops being a cube. Well, it's kind of the question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I guess you could apply some kind of criticality to it and say that once it stops being recognizable as an object with six, e six equal sides. It does have to have equal sides. Right. So once those sides become so distorted that they are no longer identifiable as that, then you would have to set some kind of resolution. There's an order parameter, I suppose, is what I'm getting at here. Mm. Though I suppose the better question is, what do you need the cube for? Right? True. What's, what's, the, what's the tolerance of cubeness in the task that you have for this cube? That's when it stops being a cube. When it can no longer satisfy cubeness parameters. Uh, as this is a fiddling with shaders and assembling models stream. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, is there a theme? I suppose we're 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 playing in three dimensions, interacting with surfaces. Yeah, I, I said we were looking at the outside of things, but mm -hmm. uh, I think if you had less cleanup to do on the models, you would have gotten to painting. Yeah. I'm sorry. I probably should have, like, thought about this. Nah. <laughs> cash stream. It's a cash stream. It really is. And, uh, yeah, there wasn't a, a slideshow, but I did show off my web browsing history. I think that's all the explanation we need. Actually, since we're, we're getting towards the end, uh, I figure I want to ask uh, audience again if there's any specific topics you would like to see covered this year.
horses. Thank you. Yes. Horses. And not horses. Zebras? Uh, I'm writing these down. Clothes horses. All right. Giraffes. All right. Equines. Maybe we could just get this all under equines. Water. Ooh. Water. Ungulates. All right. Uh, prehistoric a hippie. Cows. Interesting. <laughs> Getting fancy. Movie shots. Hair. Grass. Ooh. Grass being the hair of the planet. No, no, no. Oh. 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 We did mer horses, but not air horses. Air horses. Horses that fly. Feathered dinosaurs. Labyrinths. Okay. Intriguing. Pre horses, post horses. Post post horses. Mods are asleep, post horses. Fire and earth horses, as well as water horses. Okay. Trains. All right. See, we're just playing the game of connections now. Windows 98 screensavers. That sounds like a 3D or digital compositing episode if I ever heard one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not. Suggestion time is over. Evil bad man ruined it for everyone. <laughs> everyone, thank evil bad man. Yeah. Nighthawk painting. I don't know what the Nighthawk painting is. Let me look. I'm going to look Nighthawk. that up. Oh! The Nighthawks. Yes, I know that. Horses in a Nighthawk painting.
They would look so so afraid and confused. And you all agree to try these things with me, right? Yeah, everyone is doing the same thing. Right? You're not, like, dumping suggestions into chat. You're doing it in good faith, right, chat? All right, now everyone submit their homework for the session. I haven't given anyone homework in a while. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, homework is something that, fundamentally, you have to grade. People can do, like, a self-assessment. Hmm. Or Pass maybe a peer papers. assessment, huh? Pass papers. It's okay if you can't whistle yet, Angel. You still have another week. Then we'll be expecting, like, some Roger Whitaker level, like, rambling songs. Mm. Gonna need you to imitate five types of birds. I haven't crossed anything off my to-do list, but I kind of got there. Okay. I know how to make stuff shiny or bumpy, which is basically the same as actually doing what was on my list. <laughs> I mean, is that not a metaphor for the human experience? Making some things shiny and some things bumpy. <laughs> but which to make which? There. That's the, that's the mystery of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's where the soul resides. All right, I'm going to leave it on uh, your screen while okay. I thank subs. Sounds good. So get them, get them in there. If you want thanking permanently on the internet, this is going to be a VOD on our YouTube VOD channel, Loading Ready Live. So this is forever. Elemental Alchemist, 76 months. Whoa, that's a lot. It is. Good work. Weagle, 62 months. Drawing horses is now forbidden in Snorsh. Oh, when did that happen? Oh no. Davinky0818 is a new subscriber. Welcome to the channel. DSA Trav, 23 months. Heading rapidly towards that two year. Lionbite gave us 175 bits. We have Pooh Bear now, so who's the real winner here? I guess we could have just drawn Pooh. Ooh, yeah. If I'd been thinking about it. But only, like, nude Pooh. Only nude Pooh. Shirt Pooh is, remains Disney property. Brownie points, 34 months. Oh, hey, modeling and modeling with Can't Talk Simulation Club. That's true. I was considering starting off the stream with a very uh, talking sim style thing and doing like a goof, like it's <laughs> crossing the streams or something, but I didn't. 
Rendezvous, 32 months. Freighters can carry lots of snacks for the victory party. Oh no. <laughs> my hideous floor and my hideous legs. <laughs> you can see my pajama bottoms. Oh no. New Paladinance. Pal Paladin Ace. 40 months. Kagi 9, 40 months as well. Twins. And I'll just wait for, for the emergency vehicles to leave the premises. It's rude of them to keep coming inside my house like this. The sub cops are here. Mm. Callista Beast, 30 months. Lots of hearts. Lots of love to you too. Lucin0451, 42 months. I think you're gonna have to stop at 51. I, it's just you gotta. It's, those are the rules. Reynard Rekka, 59 months. Thank you. Almost at that anniversary. The Man of X, 27 months. Obligatory dirty Xenos message. Uh, Warhammer fans. <laughs> AI Amethyst, 53 months. Welcome back to the channel, stranger. Tabby Phobos. 23 months, almost to that two year. Again, another 23. Spicy Ferret has gifted five subs to the channel to Oven Korbinek, or Orbawa, Julko, Swivelcut, and Prophet2272, who are all new subs. Draxov, 42 months, the best number of all time, and Argonathium, 45 months. One day these elves will be ready for war. One day. Probably sometime after their new kit is released. Just in time. Just in time. Honestly, shaving off seam lines is just such a cathartic... Thing. Oh yeah. When you when you remove just like a perfect little curl yep. of plastic. And you don't even leave like a weird flat spot. <laughs> yep. Ugh. And then you fail. Not ready yet. I'm still having a fun time with my cube. Good, good. What are we about here on Horses Club if not having fun? Darn if I know. But I'm going to say this is basically the end of fun today. I'm going to go well. look at the upcoming stuff. Just pulling up channel information here. Tomorrow? Oh, wait. No, at 5 o'clock tonight, we're playing Halo Infinite again. Oh, right. I forgot. 
and then tomorrow mm. uh 10 a.m more minecraft 1 30 we're back with welder myth yeah ah clicked on the wrong thing oh god oh hey even more gifted subs from spicy ferret thank you again Kcell, Lauren R, Dr. Honeydew, K Lord, and Rhinoceritis now have subs to the channel. Uh I don't know what Adam and Ben are doing on Let's Nope. So stick around for that. Wednesday Mega Ten is continue, I believe. Kathleen still has more to do. Then there is a watch and play on Wednesday. Uh, AFK is Imperial Spells and Steam. Intriguing. Mm -hmm. And on Thursday, it's the long game this week with Destiny. Ooh. Watch some assless mans run around and, and shoot people. I wonder what we'll do. What should we do on Destiny this week? Is dares We're, still a thing? Maybe we could raid. Dares are good, but we did them last time. Yeah. So maybe we could raid. Guess you'll have to talk to the team about that. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I'll float it and see what happens. All right. Well, I'm going to say goodbye for now to the chat, and I will see you all again at five. Have a good night, chat, or have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.